scripture memory verse. Scripture memory verse tonight is Proverbs 12, 25. Anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Proverbs 12, 25. We've had this one before, and I want to do it again. I think it's something that we need to uh, continue to look at, uh, considering uh, the Word of God and how the devil likes to put us in bondage, yet the Word of God sets us free when we understand what God uses to heal us so anybody know proverbs 12 25 proverbs 12 25 heaviness in the heart of man makes this stoop but a good word make of it glad proverbs 12 25 king james version yep heaviness makes it stoop yep anybody else proverbs 12 25 Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Proverbs 12, 25. Good job, good job. Anybody Proverbs, else? Proverbs 12, 25. Anxiety in the heart of a man uh, uh, causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Proverbs 12, 25. Proverbs 12, 25. Anxiety in the heart of a man Causes depression. Causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Proverbs twelve twenty five. Good job. Anybody else? A lot of you guys know it tonight. That's good. Addie knows it. Yes. Addie knows it. I thought I heard you quoting it. Anybody else? That was A. That was 1225, or 1225A. Good job. But a good word makes it glad. Yes. Yeah, now let's look back at it. Heaviness is the word that the King James uses. Heaviness. But it can also be fear, sorrow, or it can be anxiety. So anxiety in the heart of a person says man uses the masculine pronoun what does it do it causes you to stoop is what the king james says causes depression causes depression and the word stoop really is it means to digress it means to prostrate yourself to bow in homage to royalty or to god it means to bow down. It means to humbly beseech. Now listen to me because, because there's a lot of things going on in our world today that make us anxious, that make us heavy, that makes us worry, that makes us feel sorrow, that makes us feel fear. See, this could be just as simply fear in the heart of a man causes depression. See, we don't want that. We don't want to be living according to fear. The devil wants to control us with fear. The devil wants to control us with worry. What if the ceiling falls in? Now, I'm making a little bit light of it, but we always think that the worst is going to happen. We always think that bad things are going to happen when we belong, if we know Jesus Christ, we belong to the God of the universe who's never going to leave us nor forsake us and he's there to protect us and take care of us and go before us and shine a light in our path and he's teaching us and he's pulling us out of the world and teaching us how to live in a godly way. And now I, you know that in the New Testament, Philippians 4, 6, and 7 tells us to be anxious for nothing or to worry about nothing but in all things through prayer prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your request known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus now listen this is the same type of verse it's the same thing heaviness in the heart causes you to stoop over to bow down where are you going when you bow down 
What are you doing when you bow down? See, you can, you can bow down to the fear. You can bow down to the sorrow. You can bow down to the anxiety or the worry or the problem. Or you can pray. You can worship God. Because that's what this word depression really means. It means you fall down. And, he, and, and see, God allows things to happen in your life. God allows the big giants to come. God allows the little fears to, to show up. So that you will train your heart to bow down to Him. Because there's nowhere else to run but to God. So when the anxiety comes, when the heaviness comes, when the fear comes, when the sorrow comes, the Bible tells us, pray. Well, what does that mean? It means worship God. It means bow down to God. It means bring those petitions and say, here I am, Lord. Don't let the emotion or the feeling come over you and control you. Let God be on the throne. Trust in Him. Thank Him that He's there. Thank Him that you trust Him. Thank Him for the times that He came through before. And if you don't turn it over to God, that's how people become depressed. That's how people end up bowing down to some other thing other than God is because they begin to worship it and call it their help. They call it their God. They use it to come up out of their problem. And that's how a lot of people will form addictive lifestyles. Most people call them addictions. But they begin to trust in something else as their God. And they turn to it. When everything in life, all your situations, all your problems, everything you're going through right now, listen to me, is to cause you to bow down to God. To worship God. To learn to trust God. That He's going to come through. How do we know that? It says a good word makes it glad. Only God's word is good. Only God's word brings joy back. And that's really what the word means. It, it, it means gleeful or joyful. It means a good word brings rejoicing, to make merry, to brighten up, to cheer up. When you take the word of God, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and you pray it back to God, you're talking to God, you're reminding yourself of truth. That's why we're memorizing scripture. It's good medicine. It's the best medicine. We don't want to run somewhere else for help. We want to bow down to God. We want to fall down and beseech Him and worship Him. Humbly beseech Him knowing that He has got it all in control. He says He will never leave you nor forsake you. Now listen, I'm not saying that fear or worry or things like that are all wrong. There's certain times where you might have that emotion. But listen to me. We do not want a little thing like our feelings or emotions that are momentary to decide our entire eternity. To decide how our heart is going to be shaped for eternity. We want God's word to make us glad. We want God's word to bring rejoicing. We want to be reminded that we've been set free from fear. Set free from death. Set free from the enemy who tries to get us to worship Him through our emotions. Worship Him through lies. So, heaviness in the heart of a man, a person, causes you to stoop. The question is, what are you stooping to? If it's not to God, you're going to stoop to depression. You're going to stoop down to fear. You're going to stoop down to sorrow. You're going to stoop down and give in to the emotion that most of the time is nothing real. Nothing real. Now, God gives us wisdom. There's real fear. There's real fear. If the building's burning, if there's something that's true and you see it and somebody's got a gun pointed at you, there can be some real fear. But even in that fear, you want to worship God. Even in that true situation, what do you want to do? When I'm talking to my friend today, I'm like, man, you're a hero, dude. You saved your stepdad. He's like, well, no, I just reacted. He goes, he goes, I didn't know what to do, so I started praying. Do you see his heart is trained? Situation, he's laying there not breathing. He started praying, and then just instantly reaction. He picked him up, rolled him over, started hitting him on the back. He vomited everything out, and he came back awake. 
But it was because he started praying. Where did he stoop down to? He could have stood there in utter fear and done nothing. But he cried out to God. And God gave him wisdom just to react. And he was able to save his father-in-law. Or excuse me, his stepdad. Which is amazing to me. I don't know here. I go, no, you, you know, but you were there. And God used you to save a person's life. And that's pretty amazing. So... Heaviness, anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression. It's made there. It's there on purpose. Everything going on in your life and my life is there so that we will stoop. We will bow down. We will be depressed in a specific way. Are we going to choose to worship God and bow down and say, Lord, we trust you. We're waiting on you to come to. Or are we going to let that emotion and feeling destroy us? Turn to his word and let him make you glad. Anybody else? Anybody else? Proverbs 12.25? Good job. Good job. Listen, there's lots of things. Listen to me. When, when I'm sitting here talking about, don't worry, just flippantly. Don't be afraid, just flippantly. That's not what we're talking about. There are so many things to worry about and to be fearful about. But your heavenly Father loves you. And he takes care of the flowers of the field and the grass. And he blooms and, and, and he's your Father. So who are we going to trust in? The emotion or in God? He created you. He loves you with a never-ending love. That's what we're saying. We're not saying they don't show up, but don't trust in them. Don't look to them. Don't let them control you and dominate you. And the way to come away from it, if it is, is to begin one step at a time to be reminded that it's the good word that God has sent to heal the land. The good word, Jesus, that's here to heal your heart, to heal the way we think. Because we've been trained by the devil. And the devil's the one that holds us captive in fear. The devil's the one that holds us captive in anxiety. The devil's the one that holds us captive in heaviness. But I'm telling you that maybe 99% of the things we sit around and worry about never happen. Whatever you was worried about a year ago, didn't happen. And if it does, you have no control of it anyway. Now you still need counsel and wisdom from God and how to deal with it. So worrying about it helps none. It only makes you hurt. It only makes you bow down to something that you can't control anyway. Amen. Well, next week, we're going to be memorizing James 4-7. Go into the book of James, old camel knees. It's a book after Hebrews, James 4, 7. And we may do a little bit more with this. I don't know. But it is, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Listen to me. Listen to me. It's so important. We'll talk about it next week a little bit, God willing. But submitting to God is part of our obedience to God. Submitting to God is letting his good word make us glad. Turning and trusting God is the place we want to go. Now, a lot of people will say to you, resist the devil and he'll flee. But they always leave out the part, submit to God first. When we're submitting to God, when we're obeying his word, we're learning to trust him and look to him and to truth. It makes it understandable in how to resist the devil. How do I resist the devil? Well, you have to submit to God and trust him. And you're growing in that love relationship. You're growing in the trust as you subject yourself to almighty God. You just place yourself underneath his power, underneath his word, underneath his ways. And it becomes so much easier to resist the devil. You resist him steadfast in the faith, Peter will tell us. We'll talk about that a little bit next week. So, 
put to memory James 4, 7. Okay? 